Good morning. Good morning. All right, welcome to day two of uh, Jumpstart, Windows Phone 8 Jumpstart. I can't believe we made it to day two. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so... This uh, is unbelievable. We're so glad that you're here with us this morning. Has everybody, did everybody have their coffee ready to go? Yes. Ca Ooh. Caffeinated. Yeah. Direct IV. Yeah, it's, it's kind of early for people on the uh, Pacific West, uh, the West Coast, but uh, yeah. hopefully you're there with your coffee and... And we're, we're good. We've got empathy because we were up super early to get down <laughs> here to this fabulous movie studio that we're at. Yep. Um, but we're ready to hit it here with our, our day two building apps. We've got so many great, great things great to stuff. cover. Great stuff, yeah. I think it's just going to just keep building and get better and better. <laughs> All right. So uh, without further ado, yeah. let's just dive right on in here. So uh, I think we have... Uh... I think we, uh, we have an introduction, do we? Do we have? Yes, we yeah, do. There we go. Look, this look at there. Yeah. So my, this is this is my partner Garth. Yeah. No. Yeah. I play I play bass guitar in a metal band. And, yes. And I, I rock climb. I live in North Wales. Yeah. And I have no idea what I'm doing here. So. I don't know what you're doing. I don't know what the deal is with the the hair pulled back and the ponytail because that's not really you. <laughs> no. 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 It's no, not no, you. Right. This. So this is my professional alter ego. So yeah, I, I was once described as a hippie with a thin veneer of geek. So yes. that's what I am. Um, yeah, but Absolutely. I've just uh, been working for Microsoft now for a whole month. Wow. Yeah, and before that I was uh, an MVP for various flavors of mobile device um, application development for um, around about 10 years, but I'm very happy now to be working for the developer uh, platform evangelism group in Microsoft UK. I can, if I see right behind the ponytail, I can see the implant yep, in there. Right. It's yep. still a little fresh, yep. you know, but... Uh, the scar is, is healing. It's healing. So it, it, I, I know everybody's good to hear who you really are and not this whole <laughs> computer thing. Yeah. I know this is just a side gig for you. That's right. As well it is for me. So uh, who yeah. am I? <laughs> who am I? I'm still trying to find myself. So uh, I'm a, I drive nuclear submarines, actually. Um, I, I was on a SEAL team delivery vehicle, uh, which was just totally radical. Um, I did drive a Trident submarine as well. You know, luckily we didn't have to push the button on that deal, but it did mm -hmm. lead me up here to the Pacific Northwest and Microsoft uh, and mobile stuff, and uh, I'm down with that. <laughs> uh, it's great being up here. As long as you don't ha happen to see me doing karaoke somewhere, then you know, you'll probably be safe. <laughs> um, I do blog at robtiffany.com. Usually it's about mobile and wireless stuff. Sometimes it's wine reviews, though. So you just never know. Yeah. <laughs> you just never know. Um, anyway, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna get after it here. Let's see what our agenda looks like today. Um, wow. So that's what we did yesterday. So hopefully... Um Many of you were with us yesterday, so we, we uh, introduced the Windows Phone 8 application development platform. We went through a, a couple of sessions where we essentially built a Windows Phone app from start to end, so with all the essential stuff in it. Looked at files and storage, uh, then we went into the application lifecycle, uh, background agents, the whole tiles story, uh, push notifications, and then finished up with launches and choosers, doing stuff with cameras and contacts. That was and that exciting. Kind of yeah, it was a good day. You know, we did have somebody on Twitter who said that the highlight of the day for them was overriding the back button. Ah, the, the, that is the killer you know, it was. feature, isn't it? It yeah. was the yeah. killer feature. Yeah. Come on, guys. That was one slide. Was like, yeah. Okay. Well, you know what? Sometimes <laughs> yeah. it's that one slide that does it for people, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, moving forward, though, this yeah. is going to get crazy so, today. Right. Look so, at all this stuff. Yeah. App to app communication. That's mm -hmm. how, I mean, talk about just firing right out of the gate yep. <laughs> with some crazy stuff. And then network communications. Andy is going to just go totally medieval on you with every kind of network <laughs> communications you've ever seen in your life. You know what? I mean, how, I mean, you know, what percentage of apps are connected, network connected? Yeah. A high percentage. A high percentage. High yeah. percentage. So this is critical stuff, you mm -hmm. know. Once you've built all your tic-tac-toe apps, you know, and the 30 versions of the Countdown to Christmas app, then you're going to have to do something serious like a network-connected app, right? A yeah, networked tic-tac-toe. Exactly. Actually, multiplayer tic-tac-toe. Yep. Proximity sensors and Bluetooth. NFC, that's cool. Yep. NFC is really cool. Yeah. Speech. Speech, yeah, a game-changer for our platform here. Uh, we've got maps and location, which just gets better and better. We have this crazy, awesome Nokia maps uh, that we have on all our platforms now. We've got a wallet. You need to pay for things, we're going to let you pay for things. I know you've already bought like a thousand different wallet apps on the app, you know, on the store over the past time. We have the real wallet app now that integrates for real. So this is good stuff. 
in-app purchasing. I hear that's a big yeah, bonus sure. for de developers mm -hmm. to help sell more things in the store. Um, and then we'll, we'll obviously talk about the phone store. We're going to talk about building the Microsoft the way Microsoft has the mobile enterprise application platform and, and then how you will publish apps inside your own enterprise. Andy's going to talk about doing some cross-platform development. I think we've you're starting to allude to that throughout the sessions. Yeah, you sure. can kind of see the hints and indicators of how you might do that. Andy's going to pull it all together for you uh, for that. And then we'll finish off with the mobile web and, and take a look at the power of IE10 and what that can do for you on the platform. Yeah, so it's another packed day. A it is a packed stuff. day. Yeah. You know, so Wayne and Garth here are going to lead you to the promised land. So let's get after it with app-to-app -app communication because that's where it all begins, right? Uh -huh. We didn't have this before. We have it now. Yeah. Yes, that's right. Yeah, absolutely. So what we're going to run through, we're going to be able to do auto-launching of apps based on file associations and protocol associations. We're going to show you how to launch apps to handle particular file types and then just show you how you can launch one app from another app. That's the app-to-app -app bit of it. In actual fact, this topic is not just about app-to-app -app communication. It's really about file and protocol associations. But like, we like to keep that title because it, it grabs attention, frankly. Is that like <laughs> link baiting on the internet when people put some outrageous title for a story and then you actually read the story and it's really not that exciting? Yes. But they do it to get, they do it to get the page views, right? Yes. It's an old CO tactic from the old days. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Without much ado, let's talk about launching with these uh, file and protocol associations here. This is some neat stuff. All right, so uh, you know, all the time, just on, on your using your normal PC and things like that, and or you know, you're getting an email, whether it's on your device or, or your your PC. You know, you have attachments, an email, you know, a link to a website, a SMS, things like that, and you click on it, and it launches something, and that's just something we're all comfortable with, and it's a normal normal thing that happens. We've been doing this for, for years and decades, and that's kind of a normal thing. And so we want to show you how to do that with the phone and with your apps so that when someone clicks on a particular type of file or something like that, it opens the app that you want them to open. Not unlike, let's say you get a, a PDF file coming in in a, in a document, you click it, and it launches the PDF reader, right? Yeah. Something like that, right? So I think we're all on the same page. We kind of know what the concept is. Um, and then beyond that, we're also going to show you another thing that's a little different about protocols. So it's not necessarily launching a file, but it's using a protocol to, to launch an app that you want to handle a protocol, and you can parse some stuff. And, uh, and so uh, this, this is pretty neat stuff. So user experience, when you do this, when you launch a file or protocol from an app, you know, so you're, you're, you're clicking on something. Maybe you, you do have an attachment, an email, or something like that and you've, you've built an app that's registered to handle that, uh, what's going to happen is either it could launch the app that you have registered, uh, it could give you a choice if there's more than one app already installed on your device, it could say, hey, here's, some, here's multiple apps that could do that, and I think I'm already just totally blowing off the next slide that's actually going to show <laughs> you that nice graphic. Uh, we could search for it in the store if you don't have an app, right? Yep. Things Sorry. like that, you know. And uh, yes, see, I, you know, I gave it away. So there's a nice little graphic of how it might look for a couple apps that you may already have on your device to handle, to handle that file protocol. So the cool thing, kind of going back to the cross-platform theme, is we, uh, just like Big Windows 8, we use the same way of, of launching those files, or URI, uh, which is great. This is going to help you with your story moving forward with doing things cross-platform. Um, and then, uh, but we, with the way we, we pull files over is a little bit different, and how there's a default store in Windows 8 and how we do things on the phone is a little bit different with uh, multiple apps from a store. And so uh, I'm going to let my partner in crime here show you the first demo of the day. Are you awake for this? Here we go. <clears throat> it's a gentle one, just to ease you in. A gentle. A gentle demo. Don't hurt me. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, so in Visual Studio, we've got a, a solution here which has got... It's actually got, uh, we've got four projects. That's a bit excessive. That's a lot. Yeah. So um, this protocol. <laughs> it doesn't seem very gentle. <laughs> no, no, no. It's, it's easy. No, OK, let me just, let's just quit to the, uh, the device. So um, th this protocol handler one and protocol handler two are two apps that are, have, are set up to handle the, um, I forget what it is. Let's have a look. What is it? The, 
uh, open that manifest. And this is um, set up to be a protocol handler for the uh, Contoso protocol. Uh, so that's uh, protocol handler one is set up for Contoso and protocol handler two is set up for Contoso. I've already installed those onto the emulator. Um, and now this is the app I'm going to run now. File protocol associations demo. This is my the one that drives the demo. Um, it's um, another example of really stunning UI. We've got three buttons on here. And click the first one, which is actually going to call a method called uh, launch URI async, which Rob's going to talk about in more detail. And we've got the URI is for jump start. So uh, let's see if we've got an app that knows how to handle the jump start. And this is what happens when you uh, don't have an app installed on the phone. It says, do you want to go and search for an app in the store? So you could say, yeah, let's go and find an app for that. But of course, there is no jump start app as yet because we haven't written it. So that would, if, that, if there was a jump, an app that's handled the jump start protocol, it would download it. Uh, the next one, multiple handler, uh, I said I've got, uh, just to show you in the, uh, the apps menu, I've got on the device, here we go, my first app and my other app, uh, which that's what my first app looks like, and this is what my other app looks like. So two, another, another couple of stunning apps. Go back to the one we're just running there. So multiple handlers now, we're going to launch your URI sync for the Contoso uh, URI, uh, URI, so we'll fire that. And this is what the now the the uh, this is the shell knows that you have got two apps currently installed that know how to handle the Contoso. So the user gets asked which one they want to actually launch. So we'll say yeah, let's launch my other app for that. The use this is the uh, the user experience based on uh, uh, what you've got installed. Or you don't have to run it once. So all you need to do with one of these apps is have it installed, and it's the information on what protocols it handles or what file associations it handles is all in the manifest. So as soon as it's installed on the device, then it gets, it gets hooked into this, uh, this system of uh, selecting apps to launch. That's it. That's See? it? I said it was gentle. There you go. Wow. Yeah. I was over there on Twitter. Yeah. You know, you, <laughs> now I, I've got now to you get, back on. get back on. <laughs> and we're back. All right. So that's great to know. It was you know very gentle. Great way to yep. start out there. All right. So let's talk a little bit about these file associations here. So registering a file association is kind of what I'm going to talk about. You're going to do that in your uh, manifest. Um, you're going to have certain little logos, potentially, you know, depending on the kind of files you're associating. So if it's an email, it's going to be a little tiny logo, 33 by 33. If it's an office hub, it gets bigger. Um, and then, obviously, if a browser download, of course it's got to be 176 by 176. I mean, I think that's the universal size for logos coming from a, from a browser download. So, uh, but to do that, we have to, uh, we, like so many things yesterday, we keep finding ourselves in this big XML file. Yep. Adding stuff. This is the manifest. Yes. And there's, those, there's our friend, the extensions area, right? And so we've got we've to gotta add that file association extension element you know, inside the extensions area. And so as you can kind of see here, um, the, the key element, you're going to, you know, we talked about the logo sizes. Um, the key thing is, is you're registering extensions, that dot whatever it is. And so if you look down here, it's that dot BQY. I have no idea what that means. I think you just made that up. Well, I guess, it's, it's, but a, it's an invented, this is the point. It is an invented file, file extension. Yep. Yeah, so it's not real. You, you get to do whatever you want. Yeah. As long as you don't stomp on ones that we already have, right? That's right. So you can't call it a dot, uh, doc, doc X right. or something. Yeah, yeah that right, probably won't that's a reserved one. Yeah. So anyway, pretty, very flexible, just pretty much whatever you want. And then, then your app is going to listen for that. And, you know, and it's, it's registered with the OS. The OS now knows that if an app with, it, with that extension, you know, it gets clicked on, gets, you know, executed, however, then your app's going to handle that file. And so uh, you kind of look at this query string. We've seen a lot of query strings going around all over the place with all these apps that we've been building. Yep. And so it's whatever that file association you had, and then there's a token, you know, you, you can't have anything without some GUID looking thing these days, isn't <laughs> That's it? Right, True, yeah. Andy, you know? Yeah. So, so, so this URI, it's, it's, it's kind of, it's, a, it's directly similar to, directly similar, what am I saying? Directly it's similar. Kind of a, it's directly similar. Vaguely, not <laughs> quite, like. It is similar. Let me, let me get my language sorted out. It is similar to a deep link URI where you're launching into a page. But of course, uh, in this case, there is no specific page associated with a file type association. Um, 
instead you get this slash file type association. So you, you then have to write some code to launch a, to a specific page, which is the way they could have done all of these things. So we've got a, a slightly see. different way of, of launching an app here. I have a feeling we're going to see that code right now. I think we may do. URI mapper. Here we go. And it's, it's going to take two pages to show this to you. So let's kind of walk through there. Can everybody see that? OK, thank you for that. All right, so when you launch that, because you're right, you could just get that and just launch the app, right? Uh, but you want to do some parsing, uh, potentially, to, to send someone to a particular page and to do something with that. And so you, you kind of see how we've, uh, we're overriding this, um, this URI, our little map URI mapper thing here. And then we're grabbing the contents, you know, that file association, doing some familiar looking parsing kind of stuff whenever you see index of and plus 10 and things like that. That's kind of your clue. Oh, I've done this before. Um, and then kind of going into the end of that, looking at the extension. So basically, ultimately, we've got a, a switch statement as we've, we've kind of drilled down. And then there's our, there's our friend BQY. And then, of course, uh, the, obviously the infamous BDP. Yeah, that, that, yeah. Other, that other well known file it's extension. It's a well known file extension. But, it, but, the, but as Andy said, the takeaway, it could be anything you want. You know, this is all up to you, and you're going to handle it. And then, uh, and then you can do something with it. And so you can say, depending on the file extension, you might want to go to a particular page, uh, a deep link in your app to, to do a special stuff. So, uh, so it, it's all good, very flexible. So if we're using the URI mapper, this is this is an interesting thing here, Andy, with the uh, yeah. So this is just yeah. This root is frame. this is just where you uh, this is taken from your app.xaml.cs. So this is your bootstrap code. Okay. So all the all the code you see there that isn't highlighted is what you get generated for you when you create a new project. So you just need to go in and add this line in, and this is what wires in that URI mapper into the the kind of um, startup logic of your app. So it, thereafter, it becomes part of the, uh, it, it's, it's hooked up and it, it's enabled and is ready and uh, able to handle incoming uh, protocol uh, association and file association uh, activations. Outstanding. Well, that looks easy. <laughs> and we like easy. Yeah. I think we're going to have a really exciting build slide here now. Accessing the file. So uh, let's see what's going on here. I want to see things flying around the screen. Wait for it. Oh, there we go. There we go. There we go. Yeah. Oh, and there's an app sending one as well. <laughs> Look yeah. at that. So what's really happening here? <coughs> a, long, a lot of care went into that graphic, I can tell you. It's a lot. You're a PowerPoint genius. Ah, yeah, <laughs> tell me. About it. This is amazing. Yeah. So, uh, so, so you, you may have gotten a file from an email, from, from IE, something like that. And it seems like that file is passed to some intermediate place first, the shared storage. So that's controlled by the OS, right? That's one of the special folders. Not to be confused with our special folders of our own mm -hmm. in isolated storage. No, that's right. Or your local fo folder, yeah. as it were. Uh, so, so th this is not a shared folder that you can write to from one app and then re oh. read from from another app. Let me make that quite clear. It's a special area just for the OS to use to enable this feature. OK. I thought we'd found that special place. No. No. That special place is called the cloud, Rob. Oh. Yeah. Oh. There you go. The, well, then it's good that I've spent the last two and a half years of my life doing nothing but Azure with yeah. a little bit of mobile. Yeah. So, OK, I love the cloud. All right, so things are going to go to the shared storage, and then you're going to need to grab it yourself. You're going to have to retrieve it and pull it from there. Luckily, we have some code that does that, which is great. This, so we have the shared storage access manager to grab that shared file. And so if you kind of look through the code, you know, you see that query string containing that file token you know, that extension, the thing you're looking for. Uh, and then we're going to use this shared storage access manager to get that shared file that's been put in that OS shared area. And we're just going to pull it over to our local folder. And so you can kind of see that code for the file. Of course, we have the infamous await, which means we're really asynchronous, which is great. Um, and we're going to pull it over to a local folder. We're going to do the old fun collision stuff. I love all these new collision, <laughs> you know, enums yeah. that we have. This is fabulous. And then that's how you pull it over. So pretty simple stuff, actually. But to be clear, it's not this shared nirvana place that you're going to use to get around isolating no. storage from each other. It's just a way of pulling that file into your app, and then you can work with it. But it looks like here, so we're pulling apps from some. It looks like you could send in a file to another app from your app. Um, so it looks like you could, in this code, if you see here, it shows you how you can 
use the Windows storage that we talked about yesterday and look in your local folder, find a file with a particular extension, and then you've got this Windows System Launcher launch file async. Yep. That just launches that file. It kind of throws it out there. It what, just throws it, it out there. What it's doing is it throws it out to the shell and say, here, here's a file. Yep. Find somebody to handle this. That's like kind that. of what's going on. Yeah. Not unlike probably what's happening when you're in Outlook on your device and you click on a, high, a deal and it kind of throws it out to the world. Who's going to handle this? Yeah, and actually, it's, it's, you can think of it, it's very analogous to the, uh, the sharing contract on Windows 8. So, it, we, you know, it, with Windows 8 store apps, you, you code them to say, oh, yeah, I can handle content of a certain type. And then when you implement the sharing contract in a Windows 8 app, store app, you'll... Uh, uh, you'll have some content that's currently uh, on the screen, currently focused in the app, and then you go to the charms bar and you hit share, and then the Windows 8 OS will say, oh, okay, this is text or this is whatever, and I have all these apps that know how to handle that content. Right. Uh, and then you, then, you sh then it gets passed over to the other app. So it's kind of, kind of the phone way yeah. of doing that same thing. Excellent. <clears throat> I like seeing those similarities across mm. platforms. All right, so we've thrown that file out to the world, and that's how it handles it. But as it turns out... Kind of like we alluded to, we give you a lot of latitude, but there are some file types that uh, that you cannot use, and it's probably no surprise. Kind of the usual suspects of files that are already registered, you know, Word files, JPEGs, MP3s, PowerPoints, things like that, and then a hundred obscure things used by the OS that you will probably step all over because you'd have no idea because they don't look familiar to you. So uh, the takeaway, you know, luckily. It'll, it'll just ignore it if you use it. So that'll be your indicator. That'll be your debugger that says, huh, nothing happened. Yep. That's how you're going to know that you need to come up with a different file type extension. And of course, we have lovely documentation that will give you that exhaustive list of uh, over 100 extensions. Yep. Not to be outdone, though. Andy's ready for a demo. Yeah. <clears throat> Slightly more complex than the previous one. Excellent. Not so much. So not quite as gentle. <laughs> All right, so uh, we're still in the same solution here. Uh, this this app up here at the top, I haven't uh, uh, haven't done anything with this yet. So uh, let's just check. I've got my got my breakpoints in here. Yeah, we do. Okay. So I'm going to run this guy uh, on the emulator, and it that's the main page. They get better, don't they? These URIs. So it got better. It's, yeah, that's totally. So, but actually, this main page uh, is pretty boring. But you'll notice if you go back to the solution there, mainpage.xaml is what we're looking at. It's also got another page called bugqueryPage.xaml, which is kind of more interesting. Now I'm going to just close this app and leave it running. So it's still running in the debugger. Visual Studio is still running. So we're still connected to that application but it's not actually the active application. So instead, I want to go back to the one we were running before, which is uh, that one. And you'll notice there's a, a button, the, the, the uh, third button on this page that I didn't use in the previous demo is this thing called Send File. Um, this was still in uh, that original app, and now we can enter a bug query text. And uh, what it will do I'll just show you the code. So we're actually on the um, this launch file page at the moment. The logic of this page, what it is going to do, when I click the send bug query click, it's going to save the contents that I'm about to type into that screen into a file. It's going to create a file locally called file1.bqy. Uh, and this is all the, con the, file, the uh, code to actually write that, that file away. And then... Having closed it, I'm going to get a reference to that file here and then launch it. I'm going to launch it out, throw it out there and say, OK, do something with this. Um, we're not running under the debugger, so I'm not going to step through this code. But now I'm going to uh, uh, put a bug query text in here. Uh, how many uh, millipedes found this week? Oh, ah, it's not I working. See it. No, it's not working. How? There we go. Many milli. Peds found this week. There we go. And then I'm going to do that. Save the, this is going to be saved into that BQY file, and then it's going to be sent out there. Now we've hit a breakpoint because what's happened now? We have actually we've hit the breakpoint in our URI mapper in the, uh, the the other application, which has been set up to be a file type association handler for a BQY file. Uh, I'm just going to let it run. I'm just going to 
Well, let's cancel that. Now let's step through it just so you can see what's going on. We go and find out what the file name is, and we can see that oh, we've got we've been sent to file one dot bqy, uh, and then the logic in our URI mapper is is what you saw on the slide saying okay, if it's a bqy one, then what we want to do is actually map that to a page in our application, which is slash bug query page dot xaml, and we pass that file token to the destination page as well. So let it go. Now we're in the on navigated to in the page, bug query page.xaml. So kind of the same logic here. We pull out that file token, get the file name from the shared storage access manager, and then we copy it. So we're taking a copy of that file and sticking it into our local storage. So we do that, and we read, then we're reading the contents of the file, and we're going to put it up on the screen. So uh, there we go. And this is the bug detail page. So I'm just going to, well, I just want to do that once more because I'm going to just disable the, all the breakpoints in here and do it once more because, so I'm going to close this and now we're back in the original one and just to prove it, uh, let's change the query and we're going to send that out there. And you see now, you see how seamless that was? That, we've actually gone from one app to another here, but there, but it just looks like navigating to a different page in the same app. So you've got a really seamless, very clean way of sending a file of data from one application to another. That's exciting stuff. It is. It's quite nice. The only thing that, you know, it would be nice is if once this application, if it actually edited that file and that sort of thing, it right. could actually then sort of send it back directly. Mm. Uh, you have to kind of do this awkward thing where you'd have to have a, an incoming file type and then the, uh, the receiving file would have to save it to a different file extension that was handled by the first one. So you have kind of two one-way transfers going on there. So yeah, you can do it, but it's... it's uh... Sounds like you're trying to invent your own way of doing inter-process communication. Ah, you got me. With the clever use of file extensions. I thought I got away with it, but yeah. Yes, yeah. excellent. Well mm -hmm. done, sir. Yeah. All righty then. Well then, let's move along here. So not to be outdone, we also have protocol associations. We kind of saw the demo Which of that, actually. I've already, that, I've already done the demo of that one. Well, so, yeah. so yeah. we yeah. just kind of buried the lead on that one, folks. Yeah. And, uh, but anyway, just to have fun here and talk about what you just saw, it's kind of like the file associations, yeah. you know, except it's just a, a URI for a, a protocol. So it's yeah. not dealing with the file. It's just another way yeah. to, to do things. And, and you register it. Uh, you, you have this kind of URI thing. That now, you, I just want to just go back to that. Yeah, certainly. Yeah, because we had, we've had a question in the queue. Yes. Saying about you know, can we pass anything in the query string uh, with these these things? Um, and this is the uh, URI uh, association. Do you see that example there where it says Contoso colon? The Contoso bit is what launches the other app. Right. Everything thereafter, you can put whatever you like. Ah. So yeah, absolutely, you can have data in there that, that is meaningful to your app. Uh, you know, it could be an arbitrary length string. So that just gets sent to your the receiving application. You're going to show the code in a minute and could can you, be interpreted whatever. So. Could you stringify some JSON? Yeah, you could. I, ah. mean, I see no problem with that. Clever you know. way to pass objects or a collection yeah. of objects from one app to another. There you go. See, I think mm. we're building something We, we are. We got, yes, well, this, this is, is going somewhere. We've just, got, think, to, just got to think of something to use this, this amazing capability. I think so. Yeah. I think so. I'm excited yeah. about this. <laughs> I just can't hide it. All right. And like everything, we register. Uh, in this case, we're going to have a protocol element inside the extensions. Um, and there's our Contoso name. Uh, and, uh, and then like you might expect, like we saw with the files, you, you have our URI. And as Andy pointed out, you're right. You can put whatever you want in there. And so it could, be, it could be stuff like this, like your typical query string. Or yes, it could be something crazy, like stringified JSON collection of objects going from one place to another. Yeah. Now, I don't know. There may be a maximum string length. There might be. So you need to check the docs on that. I don't exactly. actually know that. But. Like most things in life, just push the limits until it blows so, up see in your what, face, see when it right? Breaks, yeah. yeah, exactly. That's how we figure out everything. Yep. <laughs> Excellent. This is great stuff. Um, and then, of course, you can launch a URI just like you can launch the file and, and throw it out there to the world. <clears throat> and someone else is going to say, oh, yes, I'm, I'm here to handle that for you. Yeah. Now, actually, I've got a really nice demo coming up in the NFC yeah? session, the one after the one after next. No, yeah, three. Yeah, wow, the you one really know next. the session list, don't you? Yeah, yeah. And you can actually do this from one device to another, launch URIs across devices. Wow. So, really, so this is really like uh, Corba? DCOM, <laughs> something, uh, RMI? Yeah, probably. <laughs> um, yeah. Anyway, yeah. something like that. All right. Well, that's lovely. All right. And then, of course, we have reserve 
protocol associations, you're not going to do mail to or stuff like that, JavaScript. Uh, but again, it'll ignore it if you picked one. And then, uh, you know, this kind of looks familiar for all of you folks who were here yesterday. Um, I won't belabor this because Andy went through this exact same couple of slides uh, in this table, but how to launch these built-in apps via the launch URI async, you know, the launching mail, figuring out what's going on with Bluetooth or your cellular phone, you know, things like that, location lock, Wi-Fi, or even Wi-Fi for that matter. Wi-Fi. Yes. Wi-Fi, gratuit. Gratuit. In my hotel, yes. Yeah. Exactly. So anyway, great easy way to, to launch all these things that are built into the app. And then again, it's just like what we saw yesterday. Um, so this was this was simple and quick, yeah. which is a great quick we, way to we start like, the morning. We like simple and quick. Yeah, exactly. So in summary, an app can register to handle file types. We can handle URIs, you know, for protocols. Uh, and so we can handle those attachments or anytime someone launches something uh, that they've got there. And so... Uh, and you can bet that Andy's probably going to write some crazy blog post now on how to pass stringified JSON objects to another <laughs> app and see if we can do that there. Maybe I should do that. Yeah, yeah that'd be interesting. Yeah, I think we it could. is. It is quite exciting technology. This, you know, it's it's nice ways of uh, of expand, expanding the surface area of your app and new ways of launching it. And yeah. you can email around, you know, particular your custom files now, and uh, and they can be launched directly into your app. This is quite exciting stuff. It is exciting stuff. Yeah. You know, before we stop here, I, I noticed we have a, a message in our, our queue out there asking about uh, publishing apps, you know, a beta app to that closed group and kind of wondering to know how you do that. And, uh, you know, it's a lot like just when you submit any kind of app to our store, you know, and so you're at the, the Windows Phone Dev Center. And, um, and you kind of go through that same process of submitting your app for, for normal distribution. Uh, there's a, a place on the page, though, uh, under more options where you can select beta, and then you're going to put in a list of Microsoft accounts, formerly known as Live IDs. Um, or, so it could be Hotmails, it could be MSNs, Lives, Outlooks, all kinds of things, whatever that is. And so you'll put that list. That, those are kind of like your ACLs, right, uh, of people who can be, be involved in your private beta. Uh, and I think, uh, I, I forgot what the limit is of how many people. I don't know if it was 100 or something like that. Uh, quite a few. I think we might have even expanded it. Um, and then I think it's good for 90 days that they can beta test your app. And so, uh, so the, the takeaway is so, and, and then you'll see, send the deep link. You know, you might email it to them or something or have a link they can pull from their browser and, uh, and then they can click it, but you know it's hidden in the store, and so the only way they're gonna see it, be able to launch it to test it privately, is if their live ID is registered. Of course, that would be the live ID that they've registered their phone with. And so that's kinda, kinda like kinda putting that enterprise cert together with something on your app. That's how it knows that you're good to go. So uh, anyway, quick and dirty, that's the way you would do that. And so, uh, and so we're done with our first session of the day. We're flying fast, and so now we're gonna take a little break. Yep, and, and then, then come back with um, a load of networking stuff. Got loads of great demos for that. Loads of networking stuff. It's going to be great. So <laughs> refill your coffee mugs, and we'll be back in a flash. All right.